Right, right. But what do you say about the human? If you if someone told you prisoners are not human, how would you respond to that? Well, if someone tells you that a prisoner is not human, then actually it's a really a reflection of what's on the inside of them, that they can't see humanity in others, no matter whom it is. Here are people that were, were at one time were in society, and now you put them out of society, you say, this is your punishment, but we should be about rehabilitating. And that's one of the things that's really missing, is that people feel like prison should be punishment. Prison should be treatment for some type of illness or some type of misbehavior that occurred. Uh, I can remember when I was practicing yoga in prison and uh, that was really one of the things that actually turned my life around. Here I am in a uh, ward with, I don't know, 50 other men and I'm turning my butt up in the air doing some type of position. You know, one of the guys said, man, look at you, you turning your ass up like that. But I didn't care about that. I cared about me trying to improve my mental condition so that when I got out, I could do something different than what I was doing when I went in. You know, I could see that mentally we had serious problems. I knew I did. And that led me to say, okay, I want to go on and do some stuff in psychology. So actually while in prison, I took some courses, uh, at least one course in psychology, which actually led me on to uh, majoring in psychology and eventually a PhD in psychology, but it all started from that first course in prison. The start of my yoga practice was the obstacle of my mother, my mother getting cancer. The whole concept that I'm serving, and it's like being devotional to, and really serving my mother through this journey, through this journey to the end. Can't, um, you can't hold them up, you can't do anything. You, the only thing you can do is really just breathe, and breathe with them and breathe for them. And that was, now that I like reflect back, that was really the start of my yoga practice. That has really taken on my entire life. Um. I feel like my yoga practice started before it actually started. And in that sense, um, when I was young, I started into martial arts. And that was like the beginning of where I am now with my yoga practice. And then I got to a certain point where I, I, I wasn't interested in hurting another person or that methodology, and in the process, hurting myself. And I saw yoga as a really amazing pathway to express 
a sense of community. It was a doorway for me to expand my practice that had already been going on. I had been expressing myself and my body um, for years. So connection ultimately starts with the breath. And there was a, a person that I was working with in the prison unit that we work at. And uh, you know, at the end of the practice, his comment was that on the surface level, yoga is about breath. And at its very deepest level, yoga is still about breath. And that kind of, it, you know, that really, it hit me. That that's where it starts. When it all comes back to it, it's about a single breath. So Empowered started with um, an idea. And my wife and I, Christina, we had an idea to start a yoga-based charity. And in the midst of creating our board, asking friends and people that we admire to be on our board, um, we asked a friend, Roger Rippey, to be on the board with us. And we were explaining our ideas and all these really um, interesting things that we had really been inspired to do. And during the conversation, he just, he, you could see him smiling. And at first we were like, are you laughing at us? Are you, you know, what's going on? And he said, I'm kind of already doing this. We didn't realize that we were doing it on our own, in our own separate arenas. And his organization was called One Significant Act. So we said, what would happen if we came together and formed like a coalition and called it, just brought the names together, empowered by one significant act. And it made so much sense for us. It's a, it's a very like loaded word, loaded title. And it's also really important for us because the one significant act could be the breath, could be doing a vinyasa practice with somebody for the first time. I had all these ideas for how I wanted to use my practice. And my background was in education. So I had been involved in schools and I saw the great things and also the challenges involved with schools. And I became really infatuated with this idea of students that had quote unquote fallen through the cracks. afraid that things are going to get worse. What you do right now is you just breathe. So far, it's been a major stress reliever, like especially being a senior in high school. And I never really thought I was gonna join yoga. Like the last year I had some friends that were in it. And I thought it was just like a, a weird class to take. Like I guess I'm the people see the epitome of like a masculine man, they no, that's not really what a guy should do. Like the, just the first day when we started doing like the breathing, and I just felt just like a wave of relaxation once I figured out that this class was really gonna help me. Not just academically, but like just throughout life. Like I could just go back and do like a maybe simple pose and just feel better about myself. Cause I know I could just come back to that. And I just feel so like, I just rebuild my foundation. I just feel better. And but like what I really liked about the yoga was the mats. For some reason, I thought it was, it was real nice having your own personal space to, to like do your own, to do your own yoga. And so like when I thought about it, it's like a vessel but it's a vessel of blissfulness that you like you, your own, it's like a dojo for yourself. So you, you, it's like your own space you can create and you just feel at ease. You know, research says that they could end up in prison. There's a, depending on, you know, where they were born, what their family makeup is, all these different factors that said, likely this child 
is going to end up in prison or in some other struggle. So I had this idea of just bringing yoga to prisons. So really Empowered brings yoga outside of the studio walls. And what that has done for me has opened up another door where you realize yoga is not what you thought it, what it was. Like it's, it's something completely different. just curious. I had no idea what the journey to prison would be like and um, I felt like prison is not just a building and I was really curious about this building and these people in particular because um, it was a bit of a mystery for me. Um, the first time I went into the prison I was by myself. I was just very curious and I had no idea what to expect so um, the drive for me was kind of nerve-wracking and really not knowing what to expect. It's the complete unknown. When you drive up, when you um, roll up to the building, you know, there's this huge building with fences and wires and kind of what you would naturally expect with a, a prison. You go through and you get checked and you walk through the metal detector and um, at the time I was lugging, you know, a huge pack of mats with me. When you enter into the building, they walk you down this corridor where you're in the general population with um, men on all sides, kind of looking at you, some saying hi, some not saying anything. When I show up in the room, there are a group of men there that are so grateful that you're there, so grateful that you, without knowing them, have taken the time to show up, bring mats, teach yoga. What I didn't expect is how hard it was to leave, not in the sense of, um, they let me out, I did get out, is more that you have this experience, this transformative experience, even if it's, if it's for like 90 minutes with these men, and then you leave and they stay. There's this really authentic, raw connection between two humans, and then you get ready to leave, and there's this unspoken um, intention that they're so thankful and they don't want you to go. As soon as I leave, I'm trying to um, find my way back as soon as I can to bring that practice to them again. There are no grand illusions in my mind that we will eradicate physical prisons. If we had the resources, if we had the numbers of people to go into these units and the support to work with these men when they leave prison, I think that you begin to see the transformation of communities. It's a common misconception. and. The thing about being in the prison and seeing, for me, personally, for me, what shed that misconception is seeing someone who looks, speaks, acts much like me. Um, seeing another, you know, early 30s white male that, I'm, you know, could have come from where I, could, I came from. He could have had the same experiences. Someone who in my mind's eye may seem like they're in the wrong. And it's important that I see myself in them. You hear sometimes that these men have done wrong and they have, and they shouldn't receive yoga or they shouldn't receive a vacation. And I think what yoga does, there's a big misconception around that because what yoga does is that instead of having somebody shut off to what they did, it happens, it, it, it allows them to wake up to what they did and allows them to make a connection not only with themselves to the people that they 
in some cases hurt, and come back. Almost anything that can enter into your mind has the potential to imprison you. I was actually planning to go away to school. I was going to go to, um, to Australia and to do teacher's college there and I had these huge visions in my mind of what would happen and I found out she was sick and there was no way that I was going to leave. Her disease was very aggressive and leading up to the moment where she died, where she passed, was a lot of time seeing her in agony seeing her in pain and that for me was equivalent to a prison like you you're stuck you're stuck you're limited and you feel like you can't do what you want to do for this person you know after she died then you're left with out this person you're left in this in this in new prison this pure sadness by viewing it purely from the form of sadness it's a it's a limitation it's a limitation of the full expression of what my mom was and when you look at it another way when you shift your vision of what this person represents and now the legacy that i get to carry on it's like that is who my mom was that is a full expression of what she created in other people's lives. And now I get to create that, not only for myself, but also for her, and see that ripple effect in other people's lives. Troubles melt like lemon drops way up above the chimney tops. That's where you'll find me.